The White Horse. Uh, it was okay to sing in places like this to get paid, but you had to do a rehearsal, and they were in the back room of the White Horse Tavern. And uh, I remember coming over there the first time, back in 1956 or 57. I can't believe I'm seven. I'm pushing 73 years of age. What the hell am I doing up here? The White Horse Tavern used to be a longshoreman's bar until Dylan Thomas came over from Wales. He was supposed to do a speaking tour of America with his poetry. He got as far as New York and he got so drunk that he never got any further. <laughs> but he wrote some beautiful stuff there, I must say. He took his last drink there. He took his last 27 drinks there. <laughs> he stacked them up. Old Ernie used to tell the story. He was, he was the owner of the White Horse Tavern. And the German, he had a great big handlebar moustache, and he always had eight big steins of beer in his hand, and he used to shout into the back room to us, You can't sing here! <laughs> and Theo Bikel, remember Theo? He used to shout back at me. He was Russian, you see. He said, Ernie, what do you mean we can't sing here? I wouldn't mind if you said we shouldn't sing here, but don't tell us we can't sing here. <laughs> we can sing! We can sing! I stepped into the men's room down there when I came in first tonight, and that whole scene came back to me. <laughs> the sawdust on the floor, the spit, ah, and the smell of the pee running out from under the men's room toilet door, which was always plugged. My God Almighty, I can, I can smell it now. Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> But in there at the back room, we had many a great night. And I remember bringing the young Bob Dylan over there. He had just arrived in the country, and he sat in the corner with his automatic copywriting machine. <laughs> and he, he soaked up all the melodies, and he rewrote them with shards of magnificent imagery. He startled us all. But there were some great writers in there, and uh, some great characters, a, a very eclectic mix. I remember the old bag lady used to come in at about midnight, and she would have been all over the village, you know. She'd be laden down with the bag. She had her hair in curlers, she'd have a big net around it. And I always thought it looked like some kind of an animal cage, and I swear, this is true. I swear to God, I'm sitting beside her one night, and something in there went. <laughs> I was sitting beside her one night, and uh, she had fallen asleep on the slops on the table like this, you know. And the students used to come down from uh, Fordham and various universities, and they were, I was being squunched in against her. And she woke up and she said, what the f hell is going on here? And I said, oh, go back to sleep. It's only the students coming down, you know, because of Dylan Thomas dying here. Somebody died? I said, Dylan Thomas, you know that he, he took his last drink here. And she said, I never heard of him. I said, of course you did. That's his portrait right there over your head, you know. And she looked up. Oh, she said, that son of a bitch. <laughs> he was a lousy lay. <laughs> <laughs> what a great epitaph for a poet, huh? <laughs> oh, Jesus, I hope they don't say that about me. <laughs> But in there was a couple who used to tour the clubs with us. With, when I say us, my brothers Paddy and Tom, and my, my half-brother Tommy Makem. All, all guys.
kind of strange to be the last man standing, but as long as we're standing, who gives a damn, right? Mm -hmm. 